IC was designed with geologists and stratigraphers in mind. It is stratigraphically aware, thus helping users maintain a geologically realistic data set by building and inferring data based on defined relationships. It does not just treat your data like numbers, but as geological observations. In essence, it thinks like a geologist. IC helps you to maintain the integrity of your data with the use of stratigraphic schemes. In this example data set, I have stratigraphic schemes configured for both my chronostratigraphic data set and my lithostratigraphic data set. These schemes are comprised of several columns, each originating from an IC dictionary. So in this example, I have my lithostratigraphic groups, formations and members. And these all come from an individual text dictionary in which I have either created the units from literature information or built the dictionary from the imported data. Within each of my units, I have given information relating to the age and the parent unit of each of my intervals. So in this example, this Akari unit has ages provided and has the parent unit of Labra defined. This means that when I use these dictionaries to build up a column in my stratigraphic scheme, they will automatically relate to the columns that I place either side of the dictionaries. This definition of relationships gives IC a set of rules to go by. When you go about making changes and working with this data, it will use this scheme as its laws of how this data is handled. Now, when we put this into practice on a single well chart, in this example, I have my lithostratigraphic data in the rightmost columns, and I'm going to make a change to alter the depths of some of my members. So to do this, I'm going to adjust the depth of my angelfish member by moving it up the sequence. You can see when I do this, its parent unit, the Lopez formation, is also adjusted. Similarly, if I were to adjust the lower bounds of one of the formations, it too will also move the boundary of its parent unit with it, thus adhering to the relationships I've set out in the stratigraphic scheme. We can take this further by looking at a map in which I have plotted lithology bubbles showing the rock types within the Oscar formation. The map includes a stratigraphic toolbar which allows me to cycle through different levels of my stratigraphic hierarchy. Currently, I'm looking at the Oscar formation which sits within this puffer group. So when I move one level up the hierarchy into the Lopez unit, I can see that in some of my wells, I have this red triangle displayed. Now this red diamond indicates that we have an unconformity across this unit in these wells. Now if I go in to have a look at one of these wells and move to my formations, I can see that indeed above the Oscar we do have an unconformity. The Lopez unit is missing and above it sits the cherry unit. So we're missing a series of formations which is covered by this unconformity. So without this highlight, we would have to go and check through every well to find out a reason why our lithology data doesn't seem to be present for this Lopez unit. I can even go up a level in the hierarchy to focus instead on my groups, currently looking at this Gurami group going down the hierarchy again to look at the Puffer group. Now I've built a correlation across the top of my map incorporating these seven or eight wells and zooming in we can see that in this chart we have lithostratigraphic data for each of our wells. However, we're missing some of our chronostratigraphic intervals. We have it present for a number of wells, but not all. Now you can see that I've already created my age depth mapping using the boundaries in my lithostratigraphic data. If I were to line up each of my age depth points, it, co it corresponds to a boundary within my lithostratigraphic data. Now this was done using the stratigraphic scheme. I have ages in my scheme, so I used the age depth mapping tool to put a point at every depth where we have an age defined. Now to move on a step from that, I'm going to use this age depth data 
to build up my chronostratigraphic intervals. Now this is done in conjunction with a second stratigraphic scheme of my chronostratigraphic intervals. So opening my age builder, I first select the wells in my chart, select my tool and select the input data that I'm going to use to build my data, my chronostratigraphic intervals. And selecting my chronostratigraphic scheme as my output, upon processing and clicking OK, we can see that the missing columns in my chart are now populated. This can then help us go on to construct Wheeler diagrams by editing the vertical scale to show age. Thus, we're now showing where we have gaps in deposition or erosional events in among our sequence. This can even happen in the middle of a epoch where you've got an unconformity within your formations. So to finish the Wheeler diagram, I'm just going to add some ties to better compare where these erosional events are. So when I tie my wells together, I've got consistent ties across the whole correlation and I'm able to flatten on a particular event, let's say the base of this unit. So if I then zoom out, I can see exactly where I've got gaps and where I've got a consistent sequence. Hopefully you now have an idea of how IC can help you with your stratigraphic interpretation.